the Bible reading is from Hebrews 11, 1 to 7. You can find this on page 1209 in the church Bible. I'm going to read from the Good News Bible. To have faith is to be sure of the things we hope for, to be certain of the things we cannot see. It was by their faith that people of ancient times won God's approval. It is by faith that we understand that the universe was created by God's word, so that we can be seen so that what can be seen was made out of what cannot be seen. It was faith that made Abel offer to God a better sacrifice than Cain's. Through his faith, he won God's approval as a righteous man. Because God himself approved of his gifts, by means of his faith, Abel still speaks, even though he is dead. It was faith that kept Enoch from dying. Instead, he was taken up to God and nobody could find him because God had taken him up. The scripture says that before Enoch was taken up, he had pleased God. No one can please God without faith, for whoever comes to God must have faith that God exists and rewards those who seek him. It was faith that made Noah hear God's warning about things in the future that he could not see. He obeyed God and built a boat in which he and his family were saved. As a result, the world was condemned, and Noah received from God the righteousness that comes by faith. This is the word of the Lord. Adiyemi, thank you very much for reading. Okay, who was listening to the reading? Because, in fact, you can see it up there. There is a word that comes up again and again and again in the reading. Does anyone know what word came up lots of times in the reading? Do you want to have a go? Faith! Yeah, faith! Uh, Let's try all of the faiths. Esther, do you want to chuck up the faiths in the reading? Can we see them all? There they all are. Eleven times the word faith comes up in our reading. So here's our question. What is faith? What is faith? Because... Faith, obviously, is quite an important word. And I want to suggest this morning that faith means trusting a promise. Do you hear that? Faith means trusting a promise. So when I said to you, I promise that it will be worth your while to come and sit at the front, you had to decide, is that a promise I can trust? And you probably looked at me and thought, Is he trustworthy? And you're not quite sure. You'll find out at the end. The thing about a promise is you can't see it. You can't see a promise. You've got to trust in something you can't see. Faith means trusting in the promise. And to think about that, I want us to meet two people this morning. One is called Michael and one is called Noah. Okay, and we're going to meet Michael first. Michael and Noah, they're quite different to each other. Let's meet Michael. Um, Some of your parents will probably remember Michael. Here's a photo of Michael. Um, Can any of you guess what Michael's job was? His jumper is a bit of a clue. Can you guess what his job might have been? Jake, what do you reckon his job might have been? Fishing. Fishing. No, he wasn't wasn't a fisherman. What's he got on his jumper? Should we see if any of the parents know what his job was? What, What was his job? Shout out. He was a weatherman or a liar. Um, See, Michael was a man who did the weather report. Okay, And I've got a video of him doing a weather report quite a long time ago. Have a watch of this video. See if we can... Good afternoon to you. Earlier on today, apparently, a woman rang the BBC and said she heard that there was a hurricane on the way. Well, if you're watching, don't worry, there isn't. But having said that, actually, the weather will become very windy. But most of the strong winds, incidentally, will be down over Spain and... uh... A woman had phoned up the BBC and said, a hurricane's on the way. He said, don't worry, there isn't. The strong winds, there will be a bit windy, but the strong winds are going to be over France and Spain. Don't worry about that. You see, Michael didn't believe what that woman had said. She phoned up, I promise you, there's a hurricane on the way. He didn't believe it. He couldn't see it. Michael was a scientist. His science told him 
There wasn't going to be a hurricane. That is a good warning for scientists out there. But do you know what happened? We're going to watch the news from the next day. Here is the news. The six o'clock news from the BBC with Nicholas Whittle and Philip Hayton. Good evening. The headlines at six o'clock. At least 13 dead. Damage running into millions of pounds. The chaos on the day a storm battered southern Britain without warning. Wow. Michael was wrong. See, a woman phoned up the BBC, there's a storm coming. Don't worry, he says, there isn't. I'm the weatherman, I know. And the next day, massive storm. That is the roof of those, those flats, and it all blew off. It was a really big, big storm. Some of the adults will remember it. You see, Michael, he didn't trust the promise. And actually, the, the results were disastrous. Faith means trusting the promise. Okay, well, that's Michael. That's a true story. Here's another true story. Here is Noah. Here's a man called Noah, um, or at least Hollywood's version of Noah. And someone told Noah that there was going to be a great Who told Noah there was going to be a big storm? Do we, do we know? Who might have said to Noah there's going to be a storm? Who told him? It's like dog, but backwards. That didn't help, did it? God's, yes! God says to Noah, there's going to be a great big storm. So Noah hears the promise. What do you think he does? Do you think he's going to act on the promise? Look at our passage again today. Let's um, chuck up the verse. It was faith that made Noah hear God's warnings about things in the future that he could not see. See, a promise had come. He couldn't see what was going to happen. But Noah heard God's promise and he had faith. Faith is trusting in the promise. Noah trusted it. He said, look, there's a great flood coming. I'm going to act on the fact that there's a great flood. But you know what? What do you do when a flood is coming? What do you do when a flood is coming? What do you think you might do? You could just build a... He's, okay, we're going to meet one more man. This man's called Ivan. He's a plumber. He's trying to stop a flood. Have a watch at what happens to Ivan. Ivan! That's Ivan. Adults, if you need a plumber, let me know. I've got Ivan's contact details. Uh, did he stop the flood? No! no! Here's another man trying to stop a flood. Let's, um, let's see how... This, sometimes when a flood comes, they use sandbags. Have we got a sandbag picture, Esther? It's coming. There we go. Sandbags all across the road. Has that stopped the flood? No! There's water on both sides of the road. You know, it's very hard to stop a flood. I used to live in Cambridge. Flooded all the time. And you can't really stop it. So what do you do when God tells you there's a flood coming? I'm going to need a volunteer who's, going to, who's prepared to come and do a bit of reading. Got the microphone. Do you want to come and do some reading? Right, we've got, we've got a letter here. Up here. Do you want to open the letter and see what it says inside? No, a flood is coming. You can't save yourself. You can't save yourself. But I'm going to save you. But I'm going to save you. Build a big boat. Build a big boat. Love from God. Love from God. Oh, brilliant round of applause. <laughs> so God told Noah, look, there's a flood coming. Build a big boat. So what does Noah do? He builds a big boat, and the boat was called an ark. Should we see the ark? Here is a picture. Well, actually, you've got, you've got a picture of it here, too. Do you know how big this boat was? See, I did a bit of maths in the week, and I reckon if you got Christchurch and put another one that way, and then another one, and then another one, so four Christchurches, all end-to-end, -end, I reckon that's about the right size for the ark. It was massive! 
massive. They were built this colossal boat. And yet, could Noah see any water when he was building a boat? He couldn't see. All he had was a promise from God that it was going to be a big flood. And actually, where Noah lived, there wasn't any water anywhere. It was like in a really dry place. And so he's building this massive boat because he's heard the promise and he's believed it. He's trusted it. This is what the verse told us. Chuck chuck the verse up, Esther. He obeyed God and built a boat which he in which he and his family were saved that is faith faith means trusting the promise could noah stop the flood could he have said to god i don't want a flood to come i'm going to stop it no he couldn't stop a flood so he built an ark and in the ark he took his family And you've got some animals with you this morning. There's some other animals around the church. We've even got a cockroach up here just to represent every part of the animal species. All the animals went into the ark, two of every kind, and a few more for food. They all went into the ark, just as God has promised. And the storm came, but they were safe. Noah trusted the promise, and he was safe. Because faith means trusting the promise. We're going to say this together. Faith is trusting a promise. Let's try that once more. Faith means trusting a promise. That's what I want us to remember this morning. But the funny thing is, has God told you and me to go and build an ark? Would that be the right thing for us to do? To go home and say, oh, better build an ark because Noah had faith and built an ark. No. We're not meant to go and build an ark, are we? So what does, what does faith mean for us? What is the promise that we should be trusting? God's given us loads of promises in his words. And it's good to remember that faith means trusting the promise. But there's one promise we really need to think about this morning. I'm going to need one more volunteer to do uh, this. Jake, up you come. All right, I've got a... I've got a box here. Um, I'm going to take, take the envelope out from in there. See if we've got any... anything else. Anything exciting? No, just an empty envelope with a bit of paper. Um, let's, uh, let's read this out. To everyone, my son is coming as judge and king. Get ready for him. Love from God. The book and the box should help. The book and the box should help? I do. Oh. oh. Okay, what's the book? Hold up the book. Okay, um, the book is, what's the book, Jake? Holy Bible. It's the Holy Bible. It's the Holy Bible. Um, so God's given us the Bible, and he says this will help. Jesus is coming, and he's given us the Bible to help us get ready for, for Jesus to come. But, but, but Jake, can the Bible keep us safe from God's judgment? If, if Jesus is here to judge us, can the Bible alone keep you safe? What do you think? It's a 50-50. It's a big moment. Do you want a clue? It rhymes with so. Yes or no? No. No, you see, the Bible's brilliant, but if Jesus comes as judge, actually you can't sort of stand there just with a Bible in front of you and say, I've got the Bible. It gets us ready for Jesus, but it's not enough. But um, the letter said... The book in the box will help. So how's that box going to help? I mean, the box is, I guess the box is a bit like an ark, maybe. Do you want to try climbing in the box? Should we climb in the box? Do you want to, do you want to try climbing in it? Try climbing in the box. See if that would work as an ark to rescue you from, uh, oh dear, has it sort of fallen apart? Yeah, this is useless. Oh, but hang on a sec. At the bottom. Look, look now what the box oh. looks like. Ah, what have we got? We've got a cross. Now, Jake, could the cross help us when Jesus comes as judge? Can that make us perfect? Yes or no? Big moment. This one's rhymes with guess. Yes! Your mum was so nervous you were going to say no there. Jake, you've been brilliant. Have a seat. Well done.
You see, the box wasn't much use apart from it. It opens up to turn into a cross. And that reminds us that Jesus, you see, he's coming to judge. And you and I are not ready for him to come and judge unless we're trusting in his cross. Because when he died on the cross, he died to make us perfect. He died to make us ready for his judgment so that we can be forgiven for all the wrong things that we do. That is his promise. And faith means trusting a promise. So we need to get ourselves ready for Jesus' return. We can't save ourselves. We need to trust God to save us through his cross. Have a listen once more to our verse this morning. Here's what we read. It was faith that made Noah hear God's warnings about things in the future that he could not see. He obeyed God and built a big boat in which he and his family were saved. As a result, the world was condemned and Noah received from God the righteousness that comes by faith. That is the brilliant news this morning. God promises to make us righteous so that we're ready for Jesus' return. We can be right with him. How does that happen? Through faith, through trusting his promise. Faith means trusting the promise. And that's why when we're baptizing Elijah and Jada earlier, that's a brilliant thing to do today because that's all about a promise. It's a picture of a promise that God has promised to wash our sins if we trust in him, make us clean if we trust in him. Now, I made a promise earlier. Can anyone remember what promise I made earlier? What did I say? It would be worth it. And you're all thinking, can I trust this man? Because I'm not sure it's been worth it just yet. Do you know what I've got? I have got, because we're thinking about Noah and the ark. And what went in the ark with Noah and his uh, uh, family? Animals. So I've got a big box of finger puppet animals. So you can all come and choose which finger puppet animal you want to be. Whether you want to be a pink elephant or a frog. Or... You can decide. I'm going to let Amy and manage to scrum as you all come and choose an animal. Sorry, adults. You should have come to sit at the front. I could tell you attempted. <laughs> Make sure you've all got your finger puppet. And when you got your finger puppet, you could head back to where you were sitting. Okay, now here's what I want you to do. When you see your finger puppet, okay, so whenever you see it, you'll take it home, you can sit there eating your Sunday lunch with your finger puppet on. You've got my permission. And when you see your finger puppet, I want you to remember that faith means trusting a promise. And God has promised his son is coming as judge and king, but if we trust in him, he's promised to make us perfect, ready for that day. Why don't we pray to King Jesus now? Let's pray together. Uh, God, our Father, thank you that your promises are always true. And we pray that you'd help us to trust them. And we pray particularly that we would be people ready for the day when Jesus returns because we'd be trusting in your promise to make us righteous through the cross. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.